Hi again, it's Pastor Jerry with today's devotional. Um, last time we did this, uh, we were at the uh, 21 days of prayer, the last week of that, and the reading was in Psalm 27, and it had this statement there in verse 8. He says, David says, when you said, seek my face, I said, Lord, your face I will seek. And we talked about seeking God's face. And we're going to continue that discussion today. What does it mean to seek God's face? Well, in, in the uh, Old Testament Hebrew, uh, the concept of the face is like being in someone's presence. So David is seeking more and more intimate uh, proximity to the presence of God. And this is what God wants for us to do. And that's why he said, you told me, seek your face. So I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. But what does that look like? And I think the New Testament helps us uh, to understand that in a more practical way. And in in kind of there's a process that, that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 3, um, beginning in, um, in verse, uh, let's see, verse 14. He says, uh, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name, that he would grant you, and here's his prayer request, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. So, and so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. So what we have here is a process that Paul is praying us through. And it begins with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting because this prayer He's asking God to provide things for the Ephesian church that they already have. If you go back to chapter 1 of Ephesians, you discover that Paul has told them that through Christ we have all the uh, blessings of the heavenly places in Christ because of our relationship with Christ. We have all the blessings that there are. And so now he's praying for something else. And I think the reason for this is that, that Paul is leading us to... Um, a deeper experience of the presence of God in our lives. We're, we're, we trust God, Christ for our salvation. God indwells us, takes up permanent residence through the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, but Paul's saying, is that all you want? He's saying, I want you to experience this in a progressively deeper way. So we start off with basically with dependence on God's power and then leads us into experiencing the fullness of God. And of course, that happens in heaven. But it's this process. It's, it's, uh, and, and that's what seeking God's face looks like, I think, as we read through here. So, so he's asking the question, do you want to skate on the surface of your relationship with God? Or do you want to dive in and get deeper and deeper uh, with him? And this prayer describes a process that takes us uh, in that direction. So we mentioned last time that seeking God's face is something that you have to want. Uh, it's not going to happen by accident. It doesn't, you don't just happen into it. Uh, it. You have to, you have to choose it. You have to want it. And you know, that's okay because God wants it for you even more than you want it for, for yourself. And he is leading you intentionally into this kind of experience of seeking his face in the in the the things that happen in your everyday life he's in the process of drawing you closer and closer to jesus and we're going to see how that begins right here right now um so the first thing though is that this process is driven by god's power not ours it's not something that we work hard at that we get good at that we you know, but we, by memorizing so many Bible verses and praying so long for missionaries or, or whatever, those, that's not what does it. In fact, it's kind of the opposite of that. What really drives this process is the power of God, but it's in conjunction with our faith. And so that's kind of like the first step in this process that Paul describes here of seeking God's face. He says, I'm praying that, um, that, um, 
From his glorious unlimited resources, verse 16, he will empower you with inner strength through the Holy Spirit so that, verse 17, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that's where we start to get deeper. And this is also where we see how God is drawing us into this. Now, you may think that the things that happen to you every day in your life have nothing to do with your faith. You may think they have nothing to do with God or with your, you know, so, you know, um, the, the challenges you face at work or whatever, the everyday stuff has nothing to do with that. But actually, you couldn't be more wrong because seeking God's face is really begins with dependence on Christ and then trusting him to lead us through everything in our lives. Um, so it basically this progression happens as we commit and we decide and we pursue this and then God comes behind and equips us, but we are, we are equipped as we trust in him. So the first part of seeking God's face is to uh, trust in Christ, become more and more dependent upon him. In fact, the word dwell here, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, it, it, mean, it uh, has the meaning of to be at home. So you know what it's like um, when you go to someone else's house, right? You know, you're not sure what the rules are <laughs> and what to do. Uh, and so obviously you ask for, can I have a glass of water or, you know, whatever. Um, but Christ wants us to feel at home or for him to feel at home in our hearts to where because of familiarity and acceptance that we just feel comfortable with him and that he is just a, a, a necessary friendship that we depend on. Um, and this happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so every time God calls you to trust him, and this could be by, you know, in, in having, uh, you know, in, in giving a tithe uh, or in forgiving someone or whatever, and we, and we think to ourselves, I just can't do that. I, I don't have the ability to do that. But if we are strengthened through his spirit in the inner man, then we can, by faith, accept the presence of Christ that will help us and provide for us the strength, the resources, whatever it is that we need to serve him and honor him. And that process of trusting him for more and more and more for things that you are convinced that you cannot do, but then you put your faith in Christ and you try to do it through his strength. That's, that creates an interaction with Jesus and you're dependent upon him. Like I said, it's not an accident. It happens intentionally. But sometimes God just draws us into it. And before we know it, we're praying more. <laughs> and we're like, God, help me. You know, I don't know what to do. And that's a good place to be. So you see, it's not about uh, being a super Christian. In fact, Paul's going to say next time that this is available to any Christian that wants it. Okay. But instead of trying to be some super Christian, it's a matter of just letting God flow in your life. Let lean into him and depend on him for more and more and more. And as you do that, you gain greater familiarity with God through Christ. You get to know him better. You get to trust him more. And that's part of seeking his face about um, gaining more and more a, a sense of intimacy with the presence of God. And that's a powerful thing in your life. There's nothing like growing in faith where you could trust God for something that last year you couldn't have trusted him for and the year before that you know um, so whatever we encounter or if there's a challenge that God is laying on your heart I want you to to do an equipping hour at Bethany or I want you to to, to uh, you know um, uh, you know work on the praise team or in the tech team or something or, or anything that he wants you to do uh, you can, as you lean into him and let the Holy Spirit work in your life and you trust him to do these things that otherwise you don't think you can do, then you will see God's face more and more clearly. Next time we'll talk about the next thing that God does in this process. So until then, God bless. Bye-bye.